Hello. In this video, I want to talk to you about the Wittig reaction. The Wittig reaction is a reaction of ketones or aldehydes. Uh, I'm going to use acetone. I've been using acetone as my typical, uh, prototypical uh, ketone with something called a. Uh, let's see. I need an R here. Something called a phosphorus ilid. I apologize. I'm trying to move things down because this this bar needs to be something called a phosphorus ilid, and we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a moment. And it converts the aldehyde or ketone into an alkene, adding the carbon groups on the ilid to the, uh, in place of the carbonyl oxygen. So this thing here is called a phosphorus ilid. Phos phosphorus, because it's, you know, it has a phosphorus atom in it. And it Ilid or, or something, you know, so it's it's perfectly good with with or without the e. I prefer kind of the e. And this this word ilid is like the combination of two suffixes, il as in like alkyl and sort of like you know hydrocarbon group and. Ide, which is a prefix that means anion. So this is a thing that that should act like a carbanion, and it has a, a resonance contributor or, uh, where the carbon atom has a lone pair and a negative charge. And the phosphorus and the phosphorus group has a positive charge. So this thing really does act like a uh, carbon ion. And now, um, we're in the next video, I'm going to talk about how these things are synthesized and some more about the types of things that can become phosphorus ilids. Uh, and and the, the phosphorus. You know, the fact that we need the word phosphorus here suggests that there are other kinds of villains with other atoms, and that's true. Um, we're not going to talk about them necessarily here. So the mechanism of this transformation uh, is an interesting one. And I am going to present to you what is now currently the... the, the predominantly uh, accepted mechanism. Uh, and that is actually a, a two plus two cyclo addition. Uh, turns out that this explains some of the, the kinetic and stereochemical factors a little bit better than um, than the, the older stepwise mechanism. So I'm not going to present it. Okay, so this thing is Nucleophilic at the carbon, right? There's a there's a resonance contributor up here. It has a full negative charge there, and, and so, oops, wrong kind of arrow. And so we can get nucleophilic attack. Actually, I think I want to use the charged resonance structure. A little bit of a prejudice here. Uh, I, I believe I have a personal belief that the carbon uh, the carbon phosphorus pi bond isn't particularly worth talking about because of the difference in size of the atoms, but we'll, we'll leave that be. Uh, the nucleophilic attack of the carbon on the carbonyl carbon, and then another arrow showing the electrons from the carbon oxygen pi bond going over to form a new bond between oxygen and phosphorus. And so this is really honestly like a two plus two cycloaddition. 
you are likely more familiar with like four plus two cyclo additions, the Diels Alder reaction. So if this is two plus two, so there are two atoms and two atoms over here, and there's a lot of interesting things to be said about the stereochemistry of the approach. They don't approach in parallel, they actually approach perpendicular to each other, and, and that explains some of the stereochemistry better than, than other types of mechanisms. The topic for another time. This is a 2 plus 2 cyclo addition. We get, uh, and it's, it's sort of weird to draw uh, because I, I want to represent all three groups on the phosphorus here. Uh, here's my R. We get this cyclic intermediate, and this thing's called an oxophosphatane for everybody who is keeping track. Of, of wacky organic names, oxophosphatane, right? where where the, the tane suffix is a symbol of a four-membered ring ether. Right? Um, and then this thing undergoes uh, another paracyclic reaction, this time to come apart. Uh, and it's the other carbon, is the, the carbon-phosphorus bond is breaking and those electrons are moving to become the new carbon-carbon pi bond. And the carbon-oxygen bond is breaking and is being used to form a new carbon or new oxygen-phosphorus pi bond. I want to represent this as closely to the arrangement of the other things as I can. And let's see, I want to keep my R. No, I want a bond, I want to draw a bond, there we go keep my R. So now I have an alkene and then I have this triphenylphosphine oxide uh, which is this other product up here. And the phosphorus oxygen double bond is a really strong bond so there's some thermodynamic it's here and, and honestly the thermodynamics works out even though the carbon oxygen double bond is or carbon oxygen double bond is strong the carbon phosphorus double bond isn't nearly so and so the 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 switch that happens is, is thermodynamically favored and in practice this triphenylphosphine oxide is usually uh, much less soluble in the the, uh, the reaction solvents that are used for this kind of reaction so it provides an easy though, though not necessarily uh, you know effort free purification so mechanism is actually really pretty simple um, two plus two cyclo additions. So two things come together, make a square. That square comes apart in in the other direction, uh, and you you get an alkene and triphenylphosphine oxide. In the next video, I'm going to talk about the synthesis of these ilids and the different types of things R can be. And then in the following video, we'll talk about uh, w ways that the Wittig reaction can be used to synthesize specific alkene targets. Thank you for watching.